Hello everyone, Polish Links here. We continue with Lena's road in Everlasting Summer. Look, Lena pointed forward, I dropped my eyes and saw a gap between the trees. In a minute, we were in a rather large clearing. In the middle of it stood a building which looked like a village school or kindergarten. The pint was falling off the walls, there were several holes in the roof, like the aftermath of bombing, and the glasses windows look as uh, sadly and a little threateningly. It was not a very pleasant look. Sight. I couldn't remember how I damaged this place a month ago. It was like all the images had been erased from my memory, replaced by this depressing graveyard view. Well, it's creepy. Lena was still standing silently, but a natural expression of a fright appeared on her face. I'm not surprised. Do you think he's in there? I have no idea. If I was Shrek, then a haunted house would be the last place I'd hide in. Shall we go? I didn't manage to answer. The moon appeared from behind the clouds and illuminated the clearing with new colors. Actually in one color, the white of the grave. I could see more clearly the distant trees, the mist shrouding them. It felt like the temperature dropped several degrees making me shiver. Are you afraid? Lena asked calmly. Honestly, she smiled almost in imperceptibly and took my hand. It would have caused a storm of emotions in another situation, but at that time it felt like a basic necessity. We slowly walked to the building. <clears throat> Walking through the playground, I pushed a merry-go-round, causing it to creak nastily as it made half a turn. Lena shivered and grasped my hand tighter. Sorry, I probably just remembered my childhood. Did you like merry-go-rounds? Yeah, actually, I don't know, I don't remember. Probably all the children like them. I didn't like them. Why? I got dizzy when I wrote them. No wonder if you spin too fast. I liked swings more. Well, you can get dizzy on a swing as well. But why would you? I don't know. That conversation had distracted me a little and I stopped worrying myself about everything. About Shrek, about our night trip, about Lena. After all, this world is not so alien. Finally, we reached the doors. The inside of the old car building reminded me of a kindergarten, the one I attended in my childhood. At first glance, even the room arrangement was the same. Shurik! 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 Grave like silence replied to us. Even the wind outside had calmed down. Looks like nobody is here. We should check anyway. Lena's courage still didn't case to surprise me. Or should I say, her lack of normal self-preservation instincts didn't. I don't know if this behavior is strange for this girl or not. Okay, let's do it. We thoroughly examined all the rooms of the old camp. I even inspected the attic. There were signs that people had visited this place everywhere. Newspapers, empty bottles and other garbage. But there was no sign of Shurik. We returned to the hall where we had started our search. What should we do next? I have no idea. Lena sat on the steps and stared at her feet. I think we should go back. I began carefully. It's late and can't just the two of us really search the entire forest for him? You may be right. She looked sad and her expression let me know that the search was not over yet. Well, I am. I waved my hands in resignation and sat next to her. We should think about the worst outcome. Are you saying? No, but... Are there any wild animals around? I doubt it. Lena calmed down at once. He may be sleeping somewhere. He will wake up in the morning and return to the camp. Yeah, of course. I jumped to my feet and started to walk in circles around the hall. I really wanted to leave this place, to get out of fr from the forest, but it was as if Lena's behavior was keeping me here. I wanted to go on trying to persuade her, but then I noticed something on the floor. It was a trapdoor. There were little heaps of garbage and dust around it. It must have been opened recently. Look. Do you think Shrek is there? Lena squatted and carefully pulled out on the hatch's handle. It may not be Shrek, but someone surely used it recently. I had already regretted finding the damn gate to hell. Let's check it out! The trapdoor wasn't very heavy, so we could open it without much effort. I directed the flashlight into it and saw a ladder going down a couple of meters. Looks like a cellar. Let's go down. 
I looked at Lena for a mo few moments, trying to understand what was on her mind. Did she have a craving for adventure like Juliana? So where is her youthful spirit then? Or maybe she just went a bit nuts? Lena didn't seem like a crazy person. But anyway, who even said she really is a human and you can evaluate her with human behavioral logic? That thought should have scared me, but somehow I didn't pay any attention among the millions of other thoughts. Some of them were more important. For example, what could be done there? I climbed down and looked around. Everything is okay! After I made sure that there was nothing to be afraid of, I called Lena. We stood in the long corridor, which certainly wasn't a cellar. In its architecture, more resembled KGB dungeons or subway mountains, tunnel, I don't know which would be better. There were countless wires along the walls, fastened by mental looks every half a meter. There were lamps under the ceiling, covered by rusted shades, crumbled concrete crunched under our feet unpleasantly. Shall we go? Lena without any emotion. Where to? There? Well, yeah, what if Shrink is there? What would he be doing there? In any case, I wasn't really able to refuse her today, so we forgot about our fear and headed into the darkness. Lena walked next to me, holded, holding my hand. The silence of the dungeon was interrupted only by the sound of our steps and water dripping from the ceiling. We moved forward slowly, maybe too slowly. I suddenly felt a surge of claustrophobia. I grit my teeth and squeezed the torch but loosened my grip at once, fearfully of breaking on our only source of light. Then I kept silent and her silence seemed louder than any words. I started to fear. Say something. Door. What? There is a door. She pointed forward. We came to a massive metal door with a bio biohazard sign. Looks like a bomb shelter. Yeah, I'd heard something about it. Why is it here? I have no idea, maybe because of the Cuban Missile Crisis. <laughs> Cuban? I estimated how sweet time of constructing the camp makes sense. However, building a bomb shelter here was like building an airport at Fagot in Northumberland or Lacock in Wilsh Wiltshire in the UK. It wasn't deep enough and too far from civilization. The door wheel duly creaked. I had to push it all with all my strength before it turned a couple of times. I made up my mind and opened the door with difficulty. We entered the room which seemed to be the main living quarters. There were some beds, cases, some scientific equipment they had been for roughly prepared for a nuclear apocalypse. We didn't find any signs of Shurik therefore. Look! Lena was holding a flare gun and smiling. Why would I need it? To fight monsters! There are no mon monsters here. At least I wanted to believe that. If you say so, I guarantee it. I didn't want to upset her, so I tucked the flare gun into my belt. It might come in handy. We thoroughly searched the room once again. There were two exits. The first was the door we had entered, and the other one was another door exactly the same in the left wall. For a moment I felt excitement, the urge to reach the end of this labyrinth and to learn what price awaited me there. However, this surely wasn't a computer game and there is no option to save. Maybe with this? Len offered me a rather big crowbar. No, I'll give it a try without it first. However, the door we didn't want to budge. It only creaked nasty and the door wheel didn't turn a millimeter. Okay, give it to me. It was too easy with a crowbar. In the end, the obstacle collapsed, hitting the floor loudly. The hinges were rusted completely through. I pointed a flashlight in the passageway. There was a corridor just like the one we had come here through. Let's go? It was like Lena was constantly driving me on. Where are you rushing to? Me? I'm not! She blushed in confusion. Again, what should I make for her? First she doesn't fear a thing, then she gets lost afterward. You look like you don't fear anything. I don't know, what should I fear? You will protect me anyway. <laughs> She added, barely audibly. So Lena is counting on me. She believes in me no matter what. If it's possible. Stupid, naive, but possible. I knew clearly that I couldn't protect anyone, even myself. Nothing is up to me in this world. The powers that brought me here could do anything. That didn't exactly mean that inevitable death evaded me in the 
end of the tunnel. It could be lying in wait anywhere in this camp. Let's go. I tried to walk faster, but Lina seemed to not be bothered by that and she easily kept pace with me. The corridor was exactly the same as the previous one. In every last detail. There was nothing shocking about it, but at some point, some point I got the feeling that uh, we were walking in circles. The flashlight in my hand started to tremble visibly, the spot of light jumped all over the walls and the floor and suddenly it lit up a rather big hole. The hole wasn't too deep and down below we could see rails. What's down there? Looks like a mine. Shall we have a look? Why not go further along the corridor? I don't know, I think we should go down there. I estimated the height. It will be possible to pull ourselves out. Okay, let's check it out. I jumped down the hall and helped Lena get down. It really was a mine. I wonder what they could have mined here. What minerals are there in this area? I don't know. Well, yeah, stupid question. Looks like there are none now. We headed into the darkness. It was hard to walk because I couldn't choose where I trod wobbly wooden planks or even uneven ground. I wasn't able to stick closer to the walls either. The narrowness of the tunnel forced us to stay between the rails and I didn't want to let go of Lena's hand. Finally we reached the fork. Just great. Where should we go? Where well, I'm not certain that we'll be able to get out of here at all, especially if we're going to play Pac-Man. Play what? Never mind, we'll get lost. What if there is an exit too? There may be one, and what if there isn't? So should we go back? I bit my lip till it bled and yelled as loud as I could. SHRIEK! The loud echo rebounded from every direction at once, so it even fell from the ceiling in some places. See? Then I will go alone. What? I grinned stupidly. Alone? Where to? We must find Shurik, he may be... Then I blushed at once and stared at the ground. No, 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 that won't do. If we go, we go together. Okay, then let's go. She smiled and took my hand. Oh my god, how does she manage that? But first we should. I took a sharp stone from the ground and scratched across on one of the beams which supported the walls. Now we'll know where we started. Oh my god, again this crap, I don't remember. Left. Left. We came to some kind of miners camp. Pigs and helmets everywhere, rusty wagons stood in the corner. All the items were so old, they dated from the beginning of the 20th century rather than the middle. So this really is mine. Which means we could wander around here for ages without finding a way out. But I sensed that exit was somewhere nearby, and so we went further. I don't fucking remember where to go. Left. Right. No! Well, I went left again. Right. Right. Uh, fuck. Left. Right. Oh, god damn it. Left. Left. Yes, yes. Left. Right, left, god damn it, I freaking don't remember the way, left, 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 right, right, exactly we were there. Ah! Where should I go? I don't fucking remember the way. Oh! The tunnel has led us to a hall with a high ceiling. Although it really hardly could be a hall, it seems one thing was mined here. Maybe a cooler god. The walls had been cut by big axes or pneumatic drills. This place was pitch black, so our only selection was the flashlight. If it breaks, it's unlikely we'll ever get out of here. I noticed a red 
piece of clothing in this light. Do a spell on her neckerchief. Shriek was obviously here somewhere. Shriek, 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 where are you? Shriek, Shriek, Shriek! Only I hold sounds for us. He must not be far away, since we found the scarf here. Frank is speaking, I was mostly wondering where he actually was. Where could he have gone from here? There were no other exits from this room. Certain news was true that there were other places in the tunnels we hadn't visited yet. That means we had to keep searching for him. There is another fork on the road. Oh god damn it. Left. Left. Alright. This is the beginning. Left. And left. And we are here. And right. And right. And right. And right. And fuck. And left. And left. And I don't know right. And left. God damn it. I don't remember. And it's so freaking annoying to be honest. There is another form. Okay, go right. There's form. Go left. Uh, go right. Go left. We are here just a few minutes ago. Alright, this is where we began, you say. God damn it. How? Wait, nah, let's end the episode here. I'll try to find a way. See you in the next one. Bye.